So let's get started. So what you see here is the thing that we have built um, a while ago. It is a website with no really with no important content, but you get nice animations when you go to a different site. And as you can see, we are only requesting a partial, which is just a single line of HTML that's being swapped in, um, and all the rest is JavaScript and transition magic. And this is what we want to try to make work offline. Oh, somebody went full screen. That is not good. Let's not go full screen. Um, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to register a service worker. And because I'm a fast typer, I'm done. <laughs> you cheat. You big old cheat, you. So what I usually start with, with is a string for a version. Wait, because wait, 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 wait. Go back, go back, go back. So you've got a right. If service worker in Navigator, let's talk about that. Uh, just to that is progressive enhancement. Right. So basically, it checks if the Navigator object has the service worker call, and if not, we're not going to do anything. If okay. it does, we can actually register so a we, service worker. So we, do, we, do, we don't register the service worker, and we tell it scope. You're going to control everything from forward slash. You're going to control, yep. control every request. Everything. Everything. Yes. Right. As you so, as you were. So. Version string I usually do because it is a nice place to uh, force a reload of the service worker. So um, the service worker file is going to be checked if it has changed, if it, if, it, if it is byte equivalent. Correct. It is not going to be reloaded. If it's something changed, a whole new service worker is going to be spun up. So a version string is a very nice place to force this kind of now, behavior. Now, good news. If you uh, set far future caching on your JavaScript files, um, at most, the spec says you're going to wait 24 hours before uh, Chrome, or in fact, any browser that supports service workers, will go and try and get a new version of your service worker. But you could be stuck with a service worker version for 24 hours. So typically, on a service worker, you want to make sure that you're serving it. For example, today, we changed the schedule of Chrome Dev Summit. If we had been stuck for 24 hours on the same service worker, That bad. would be awkward, right? Kind so of. there we go. So the first thing we're going to do on install basically always looks the same for me. I usually do a, a skip waiting in here, which means cell dot skip waiting. Typo. Or he caught me. Bug. So we're gonna skip. We're not gonna wait for SoSucker shutdown. We're gonna take over immediately, which is also what we have to do in activate. Okay. So uh, let's talk very quickly about the life cycle. So when a service worker is downloaded, it goes through an installation step. Um, I think so, Jake wrote a really good article yeah, about that. I mean, oh, yes. Yeah, so there's a brand new article on developers.google.com slash web uh, slash fundamentals, I think it probably is. It's probably on, yeah, it's probably on fundamentals. Um, and uh, I'll find it, and I'll post it into the, uh, the Slack in a moment. Uh, but basically, it talks through the lifecycle. But in the short version, you have an installation step. When a, a service worker has finished installing, it will activate as soon as, any, as soon as it's able to, which largely involves any connected uh, clients, they're called have disconnected, and it becomes available. Otherwise, you have to wait until they've all disconnected. You've got an uninstall. You've got I'm not going to skip waiting. On activate, I'm going to claim all my clients. So my new service worker is active now, but it hasn't taken care of all the open tabs, if you have multiple ones. Self-clients claim says, give me all the tabs that they are, and I'm going to take care yeah. of them from now on. OK, so if you've got an existing service worker, you're just basically kicking the old one out immediately and saying, I am the new one. I will handle everything from this exactly. point on. Exactly. OK. And for the unfetch, for now, I'm just going to say, I'm just going to do a, a knob service worker, just, just as a path through. So I'm going to respond with the fetch. So I'm basically not going to do any offline logic, just any request the page does, pass, I'm going to do to the actual through. network and pass it back. So if we reload this site now, we see the service worker just got installed, which is good. And now on reload, we should see every request twice, because the website does a request, for example, the SC view file, which gets to the service worker, and the service worker does the actual fetch, which is why it also shows up down here. So everything is still working the same, but we have a service worker now in between our website. So it's really worth pointing out this. Um, that little cog, the cog there is the, is the thing you're looking for. And also, also the, if you the have from, a, from service, service worker. worker. That so is uh, good things to watch out for. But you are seeing that two steps. Something went to the service worker, the service worker did a fetch, and then it comes back. Okay. So a, a pretty common way is to download the files that you know the user is going to need on install. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So we're going to define an assets array. And these are the files that we need. Dude. Boom. Uh, you're like, today you're like the king of snippets, aren't you? And I was like, how long has this taken you? And he's like, eh, I've practiced, and I can do it in like 11 minutes. I didn't realize it was all snippets. That, these are actually the two snippets I have. Okay, we are done right, with snippets right, now, right. because it's boring typing this out, hey, I thought. There's no semicolon at the end of that assets declaration. Not well, it's not technically I, wrong. It's just awkward. Uh, 
Oh, if the was switched on, it would have a, a real issue with you right now. But now, 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 I have now, an issue now with you. we're going to do the okay. interesting. Part. Okay. All we're right. going to write async function. Oh yeah. Which now everybody knows will run synchronously. Exactly. From the quiz. Until I do await and do caches open right. static. Now, you've got to explain what's going on exactly. here. Exactly. So async function, just think about it as a function. It is actually a function that returns I, a promise, <laughs> just that we're on the same page. Yeah. OK. But by putting, you're sort of marking it by saying it's an async function. Because you... only inside async, async functions we can use await. And yes. we want to do that because it's cool. Um, and that means that this function actually it's returns a reason. promise. So okay. everything in here will basically be kind of rewritten into a promise chain, but it's so much more readable now. OK, so we're saying we've got an async function. We're, gonna, we, we're saying open the caches, and we're going to So usually you do like a dot then afterwards, and you get the cache, and then you can do something inside the dot then. But now we can actually just await it for it. And this is the same as a dot then, but puts it into a variable, which is So just it reads like synchronous code. Like, I want the cache, and then I want to do something else, and something exactly. else, and something else. But under the hood. It's magically doing sort of promisey type stuff. Basically. So the next thing is another await where we can do cache add all assets. So this step is going to wait until we have downloaded all the assets in our array, put it into the cache, and then we will return skip waiting. So the ultimate value of this promise that the async function returns is going to be self skip waiting, which is what we want to pass into wait until because we're done with our setup. But before that, all the other steps are going to happen. And we can check this works by reloading the page. Because now the service worker, oh, remind me, I'm going to write a lot of async functions. If I forget these two parentheses at the end, shout, because it's a painful debug. But we need to want, we want to invoke this function right away. Ew. So let's do this again. Sorry, uh, that was uh, involuntary. <laughs> <laughs> so service record, and we see now it downloaded all the files again. Which reminds me, when we do these, it's not production code. Mm. Uh, I'm not saying you're writing by code. Awkward. I am, But I, it, there is a sense in which uh, we do this stuff to kind of show the approach that you take. This isn't necessarily stuff we'd say, just take this, copy, paste, and you're, you're good to go. Uh, just, yeah, we just that is of, important. Uh, it's worth mentioning. So now that we have things in our cache, we know that everything from our static folder is going to be in our cache 100% because we are downloading it on install. Okay. And this is what I want to take uh, advantage of in our on fetch. Well, can you can you go back and reload the page and then show them the cache? Uh, oh yeah, inspection I can. In DevTools, so, really useful. So, so at this point, we should have all these assets in the cache, right? So we have the cache store on the application tab. We have the cache storage. And we can go and have our static cache, and all the files are in here. So and this is really useful to see if everything can actually you, can landed. Can you show the response? No, you can't. OK. Awesome. I still don't know why. I don't know what this, this thing is. It should say OK, but it just doesn't like you right now. I am in Canary because async functions are only in Canary. So this, there might very well be bugs okay, right now. Uh, so okay, OK. But you normally see, oh, you normally see the, the fact that it was an OK request yeah. kind of came through. So uh, we are now in the on fetch. And what I want to do is, if this request is somewhere for something in static, I, want to, don't even, I don't even want to bother with going to the actual network, because I know I have it ready. So something that I kept finding myself doing is actually parsing the URL. So uh, event.request.url is the request URL, but it's just a string. I actually want to have it separate into like the query part, the path, the domain, and all these kind of things. So I'm just going to attach a new thing to the event, which is parsed URL, which is a nice URL object. Because what I can do now is event parsed URL path name starts. You hope they don't add that to the spec. Or you're going to feel really awkward. Right? A little bit, right? So basically, what I'm checking is if the path name starts with static, yep. I'll give it some special handling. Namely, I'm going to respond with a cache.match event request. So I'm looking in the cache for the request object and okay. going to respond with it. And I know it's going to be there because we are installing that. So yeah, so we install these assets. And then when we get a fetch from the page that says, I want whatever URL, it, hopefully we're going to find it. If, it's the, if the URL starts with slash static, we go find it from the cache. We're pretty yeah. confident. And we should be able to return. Otherwise, we're going to stay with, with fetching for now. So what should happen in our network tab is that all these service record requests should disappear. So I'm going to reload once, which is going to trigger a reinstall of the service worker. So this is all the same. The new service worker gets installed. And if I reload again, all the service worker requests are gone because we're loading from cache now. Yeah. Now, here's an interesting one as well. That bottom request there, 
is uh, the service worker trying to do an update for a new version, trying to find, see if there's been Checking an Checking if it's byte equivalent or not. Yeah, so you will see that kind of going, the service worker looks for the new service worker. Uh, so that's normal. So for the rest, right now we're, if there's a request for something that we don't have in the cache, for example, our index HTML, it goes to the network and just gives it back to the browser and then it just disappears. We don't save it anywhere. Right, so this is the idea, okay, so You've got those, how many is it, five? Five assets. If I request something that's not in there, we go and fetch it, but then we just kind of, it's, you know, if we're offline, we wouldn't have it for next exactly. time. Exactly, and okay. that's what we're going to change. And I like to write functions for the different caching strategies. So in this case, I'm going to do a stale while revalidate. Validate. There we go. Oh. So what this means is stale while revalidate means if we have something in the cache, return it right away, even if it is stale. Okay. And in the background, fetch it from the server and update the cache. So we see this on uh, typically on social networking sites where they kind of go, here's all the posts that I've got stored. Enjoy those. Meanwhile, I'm also going to go off and get the latest set of uh, posts. And when I've got those, bam, I'll update my collection for you. So the one ni nice thing about the strategy is that we're definitely going to do both. We're going to do fetch, and we're going to do check the cache, because we're going to need both in either case. So we so gonna somebody's asking um, on the chat, and if you're not in the chat and want to uh, join in, it is the chromiumdev.slack.com, uh, and it's, we are in the general channel. Um, somebody's asking if the code is going to go onto GitHub. Totally. The, the answer is yes. We have. I will post the link in the chat if somebody else doesn't get there before me. We have a UI element samples repo, which has the whole, all the elements that we've built, all the stuff we've built. Sorry, and supercharged just, so yeah, far. All the supercharged stuff so far. Um, for you to look through, and this will be no different. So it will be in there. Uh, I'm, I might clean it up a little bit afterwards. Some comments, just to know, you know, to remind you what I was actually doing. Yeah. Because I'm not going to write comments now. Like, who does? Really? Come on. Um, so we have two things that we can do now. First, we have to figure out what to respond with, and this is something that I want to give to you. In respond with, try to get to the response as fast as possible, and nothing else. Caching, you can worry about in the wait until. Respond with should be fast. Okay. So now you're going to have to explain the difference between respond with okay, and so, wait until. So we have event, respond with, and event, wait, wait until. So respond with expects a promise that resolves the thing that is going to be given to the browser as the response to the request. So for example, you could respond with the fetch. Yeah. And a fetch is going to return a promise, which will ultimately result in the content of the thing that was being fetched. Which is a response, a right. response object. Wait until, however, keeps the server worker alive if you want to do some further work, like opening a cache and putting stuff into that cache. Otherwise, the service worker might get killed before you actually save it. Yes, now this is an interesting part of service worker work, is that they, there's no promise given, or no, I shouldn't say promise, there's no guarantees given that a service worker won't be spun down. Okay, so once, say for example, you've loaded the page. Even if the tab is open, yeah. it can be spun down. If, if, so once Soma had done his reload of the page, uh, the browser is well within its rights to say, I no longer need this service worker, get rid of it. Which, by the way, is why DevTools says now that service worker termination by a timeout timer was canceled because DevTools is attached. So it was going to shut down the service worker, but because DevTools is attached, it said, I'm not going to do that in case you want to inspect what's happened, in case you just want to have a look at the or service worker. Or because when you log an object from the service worker, you can't expand it anymore if the service worker has been killed because the context is gone. So, so it's just a service from the Chrome people to us that right. we can do debugging. And so they wait until is your programmatic way of saying, don't shut down the service worker yet. I have some stuff to do, which in this case, I assume is going to be putting things into a cache. Presumably. Well, in respond with, no. In respond with, right. we're just going to worry about how to what the response is. So our response in this case is going to be a promise.race. Because whatever we have, the fetched version or the cached version, I just want to return whatever is there faster. So race, is, promise race is a function that takes an array of promises and gives back whatever promises settles first. Okay. So okay. So you got to fetch. You're going to look in the cache. You're going to say, don't care. Pick one. Whichever, whoever is faster. gets there first. Most of the time, I would expect that to be the cached version. Yes. However, if we are offline, fetch rejects, and promise dot race doesn't care if it's a reject or a fulfill, it will return whatever settles first, which includes both. So when we're offline, fetch uh, is almost uh. immediately going to throw and be like, I'm offline, and can't do anything. And our promise dot race is going to say, OK, here is your rejected promise, have fun, which is not really what we want. So uh. what, what I do in this case is I'm just going to put a little sneaky catch to the fetched version and say, if you're going to 
reject, just turn into the cached version too. Nice, that is well cheeky. So in sorry, this, I'm, sorry, I'm totally stealing that. So what's going to happen now is, I, and now we have to think about this. So if the fetch rejects, we're going to get the result of the cached version, which can be a, a response, but it can also be undefined, which is what caches.match returns if it doesn't have anything in the cache. Oh, OK. So in this case, what I'm going to do is, if the response is not valid, so it is undefined, I'm going to return the fetched version. Oh, so this what? covers all the possible outcomes. Because you also have to think about there is a way, if we are actually online, the cache could re res uh, resolve first, but could be undefined because we don't have anything in the cache, and then we want to wait for the network. So, so what, what, at first glance, what appeared to be quite neat and tidy, you're kind of going, right, fetched and cached, but if the fetched version decides it's offline, and we'll switch to the cached version. But if the cached version doesn't work out for whatever reason, we'll go to the fetched version. Yeah. And now it gets Everybody following along. There's going to be a pop quiz. Oh, no, we're actually, actually doing a pop quiz. Well, we might actually have a quiz question. Uh, Damn. Nobody's going to get the right so answer. So the thing is, as I said before, fetch can reject, because when we're offline, it's going to reject. So there might be a way that cache responds first with yeah. I got nothing. Yeah, see, people, see Matt, Matt Gaunt, who's one of our colleagues, he just says he, I was just sick in my mouth. Oh, Gaunty. <laughs> I'm going to sort of get back to him on that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what I'm going to do now is fetch could reject. So if that happens, if we're down here and fetch rejects, we know nothing is in the cache and we're offline. So what are we, what are we going to do? Panic. Exactly. That's my code. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to return a new response. Lol, with offline. No, with nothing oh. in the body to say 4-4. Done. Oh, that's such Boom. a grown-up way of doing it. I know. I'd just be like. I am German. Uh, well, OK. I would have been like, <laughs> yeah, I don't. So let's comment this out for a second. Reload the page. Get the new service worker. Any errors? Looking good? No. Looking good? Oh, 404 on the local host. What did I do wrong now? Mm, that's now, at this point, I would, prob I would try and be his rubber duck. Anybody heard of the rubber duck theory? Yeah, a few hands going up. If you've not heard of it, the idea is that you have a rubber duck on your desk. And when you hit a bug, you introduce yourself to the rubber duck. Hi, I'm Paul. Here's my problem. And as you explain your problem to the rubber duck, in this case, me, um, you tend to go, oh, oh, I did, the, I did the thing with the thing. It's fine. Thanks, rubber duck. And you go back and you fix your bug, often by just talking it through with somebody. Um, apparently, even an inanimate duck is enough to help. So how's it going? I'm 31. Cached with a D. It's a bug. It's a typo Thank bug. you. See, I think if you'd had linting on, you'd have, you'd have got that. Me, 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 me. Yay! A plus. Uh, so everything should totally still be working. We're still fetching everything. Um, but we're not putting it in the cache yet, so let's fix that. OK, so we have this thing done, which basically does the right thing. Just believe me. I, I do. I'm just, I'm, OK. And now we're going to talk about the caching. This one is actually simple. So what we're going to do is we're going to wait for. Is it Surma simple? Or no, it's it, actually. Because like, I'm looking at the other one. So we're going to wait for the fetched version. We're going to wait for our fetch. We're going to open our cache, caches.open. I'm going to call this one dynamic because we're in. So we have the static stuff. This is, this is the stuff dynamic. that we're kind of going, oh, we didn't have this to begin with. So maybe, for example, this would be where you'd store your you know, your posts, the stuff that changes over time, right? Maybe user-generated content. Incidentally, if you're taking this approach, make sure that you have some kind of purging strategy. Otherwise, your caches can grow forevermore. Hashtag topical. There you go. Um, so you want to make sure that you have a way of uh, getting rid of old, stale so, data. I'm just, so we wait for the response, we wait for our cache, and then we put the response in the cache. Done, almost. So what we're going to, as I said before, uh, the fetch can reject if you're offline, so we are just going to uh, catch that error and just lol, not do anything about it. And also, wait, did I miss anything? Hey, you, were, you weren't grown up anymore. Oh, I'm so Eat proud errors. of you. Uh, eat er OK. No, I prefer it when it's lol. <laughs> so this should be working, right? So, so OK, so. Oh, no, it's, we have actually something subtle, which is why I almost forgot about it. So. Let's imagine this. The cache got nothing. That means that our respond with returns our fetched version. And then we get into a wait until, and we want to store 
our fetched version. So we're using fetched version twice. Ooh, ooh. And I know that, this one. I know this one. That doesn't work. Because no. you, the body of a fetch is a stream, and you can only consume it once. Right. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to do a fetched copy. So this is the same as the fetched version, but the response should be cloned. And then down here, we can wait for the copy instead of the fetched version. OK. So let's reload and see if this works. Reload, new service worker, and another reload. So we can still go to about. We can still go to contact, all good. And now let's go to the applications panel and go offline. Reload, still works. About, cool. Contact, cool. MISC is not going to work because we haven't m visited MISC just yet. So this is just going to put our, up our great spinner. OK. But so what we'd, we'd, we'd want to find a way to kind of handle that one nicely yeah. and be like, Maybe. sorry, can't get this offline. Maybe. Not today, though. No. <laughs> I mean, it's almost like you're saying with time constraint, then I keep interrupting you. Yeah. It's yeah. almost like it's revenge for me for all what our other What doesn't work, though, is that we cannot refresh here. It just doesn't work. Oh. Well, because you've all got errors as well. Well, yeah, because I just. An unknown error. It's great. Oh, OK. So in the dynamic, we, all, we have the root page, but we only have the partials for about and contact. So that's why we can only refresh while offline uh, on so home, but not about and contact, because we don't have the complete page cache just yet. Yeah, so a bit of background for you. When we made this originally, each individual page, we served the whole thing. And then on the updated version, we only pulled in the bits that we actually needed for the XHR, so that when you go to, from home to about, we only pull in the little bit that was needed. And so what we're saying is that the, that the thing that's caching, it's only caching the, the changed bit rather than if you refresh, it goes, well, I haven't got the full about page or the full misc page. So we need so, to figure that one out. So what we're going to do is, and this is where it actually gets exciting, we are actually going to do the templating in the source record now. So we're going to pull in our header partial, our footer partial, and do the assembly of these partials in the source record. The same thing we built on the server side in the server side rendering episode, wow. we're going to put that into the service worker. So the first thing that we need is our partials. So I'm just going to sneakily put those in our static cache, which is header.partial.html and also footer. Just so you see what these look like, they're just partials. The start document with a little bit of, this is the wrong document, but it's similar. Let me check where it is. There it is. Uh, it's just basically the top of the document and the bottom, and we put our own content in between. And there's a little bit of templating magic, which we're also going to take care of. So now we have the partials in our static cache. And now we need to figure out how, when is this request for a web page for one of our top level pages instead of any assets or other links we might add later. That seems like something that doesn't have partial on it and would have gone to the dynamic Actually, cache. we solved this when we built the back end, and we have this great regex. Yay! That, uh, does Hang on. Are you sure you don't want to just reuse the code in a kind of isomorphic way? This is almost what we are doing. Almost. Almost. Okay. And I'm not going full isomorphic because I think isomorphic has the flaw that it assumes you have node in the back end, which mm, sometimes, or maybe most of the times, is not the case. Okay. So we're gonna, when you want to do templating in the back end, choose a templating language that has multiple language bindings. So whatever you use in the back end, you can use it in the service worker and the back end. All right. So on the fetch, we're going to see if our top level section regex matches our uh, event parsed URL path name. And if that's the case, we can call our function that we are about to write, which is going to build the site. If not, we're going to use the existing code that we just wrote. So we are going to write build site, which is going to be interesting. So event respond with. What is going to happen in here? Obviously, we're going to use an async function, because they're nice. And I'm going to do these, because I'm going to forget them. So the first thing that we need is we're going to need to get a hold of our files. So the files that we need are caches.match, header.partial. So again, those from the, the static cache. Because we know they're there. Yep. The footer. And in here, we are going to basically use our stale while revalidate function, more or less, uh, with the event parsed URL to string plus partial. Gotcha. So you basically, OK, I right? see where you're going. You need a comma after that one. I do. So actually, let's, and because both caches.match and everything else is going to be a promise, we are going to, we're going to wrap this in promise.all. So 
this is good, but if you paid attention, right. you know that stale while well, revalidate doesn't actually return a promise or return anything. Yeah. So, this, so what we're going to do now is basically we are going to use this function and write a little wrapper on it that actually returns a promise. And this is one of the nice and yet ugly things. I, no kidding. I, so, stale while revalidate wrapper. It's so hard. Request. So this is the request URL, and this is going to return, for all we know, a a promos. A promos. I shouldn't mock you. I've, I, am the, I make so many typos when I'm typing. It's embarrassing. Um, and so there I am being unkind to I, you. And I never mock you for it. I, and yet you do. I, See? I'm just unkind, aren't I? Yeah. I feel Pre pretty much. Pretty bad about that. So we're going to call our old, old function, which takes an event. We're just going to build our own event now. We're just going to pretend to be an event object, even though we are not. Because the only things of event that we're using inside the stale while revalidate function the are respond with, wait until, and request. Wow. So our request is going to be request. Because interesting, both fetch and cache take both request objects, but also strings. Huh. So this will just work. Great. Our respond with is going to be our resolve function. So that means whatever this thing, you can see where I'm pointing it on my screen. Yeah, I was going to say. I'm a genius. Yeah. Well, this thing. So whatever this thing resolves to is going to be passed into respond with, which now is the resolve function of our new promise, which up here will give back the value. And also, we need the actual wait until, so we can't really create that, so we have to pass it in. So wait until, so we have to put event wait until dot bind event. Ew. However, it's going to get better because I'm never writing a service worker again. Service workers are hard. <laughs> so the thing is, your service workers are hard. Mine don't look anything like this. Mine are really like, and they don't work. That is true. They. So the thing, the thing is, something that ju just got fixed. I feel sad now. I'm, I'm so just going sorry. Going, I'm done. <laughs> The thing that uh, just got changed in the spec, but has not in the browsers, is that right now you can't call wait until inside respond with or the other way around. Okay. You can only do it at the top level in the same tick that the event got dispatched. So we are going to have to do our own wait until. And what I found out is a kind of dirty hack, which I'm just going to use until this change lands. I'm going to put a new promise into wait until and just save the resolve function on a variable and just use that instead. So that means that the service worker will now stay alive until the my wait until will be called, and all the browsers should be happy, even though we are technically calling a wait until function, even though it's our own inside respond with. The last thing I want to fix here is that we are appending partial to the string, but that isn't technically always correct, because this might already be a partial request. So that it would be question mark partial, question mark partial, which we don't want. The good thing is that we already have a parsed, your, parsed URL, a URL object, which has search params. Oh, not caps lock. Search params. And we're just going to set partial. So that means if it's already set, nothing happens. If it's not set, it will add the question mark partial to our URL, and we will always get the partial thing. OK. So it's, OK. We got our files. We do. The last thing we're going to need is actually get the contents out of our responses. So our contents are the files. And of all of those, we're going to get the text. OK, so, so you're making this request for the header, the footer, the actual bit in the middle. And now you're, gonna, you're mapping that by saying, OK, well, each one of those get the text for each of those. Exactly. However, text is a response. So once again, we have to put this in a promise.all. Because again, fetch resolves when you get the headers and the metadata. But then the body is a stream. So dot text basically returns a promise. It reads the entire stream, puts it in a string, and gives it back to you. Okay. So now we have the contents. Our content, the thing that we actually want to pass back, is the contents joined, because it's just three strings, and we're going to concatenate them. And then we're going to return a new response with, with, our, content. Con with our content. Yeah. So this is basically how we do the templating inside our service worker. Mm -hmm. So let's reload this. We're going to get the new service worker in, or not. Did I miss something? Oh. Yeah, that shouldn't stop it from working, though. Thanks, though. Hmm. Offline? You checked the offline oh. box. No, I did, I did uncheck it here. 
Oh, that's no, a service worker thing. That's an interesting bug. Usually those are synchronized, but apparently they're not. Dun, dun, dun. Thank you. Uh, 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 so uh, let's. Uh, I got that. But it's still not working, is it? Okay, I'm just going to unregister my service worker okay. because something is clearly iffy here. Stop. It does happen sometimes with, when you it use is Canary. Ca yeah. It can happen. Oh, there's like three, five service workers installed now. We should be on the safe side. Yeah. Uh, ah. Interesting. How's your mind so, types working? So, out for as you? you can see, <laughs> it's te dot text, right? That, that's exactly what it is. So the default. MIME type of response uh, is text plain, and it looks which great. is really not what we want. So That's in great. our response, we have to add headers, content type, text HTML. Reload, new service record, reload, hooray. But nothing works, which is expected <laughs> because I didn't do the templating. Oh. So I still have my template expressions in here. So now we're actually going to load the templating library. Oh, we used handlebars, right? I don't anymore because handlebars turns out to be like 80 kilobytes. And I found a nice Ooh. little talent library called DOT, which I thought was really nice. And is that just dot? Dot. Well, dot. it is D-O capital T, so I don't know how to pronounce it. Dot. Dot. Two. <laughs> All right. Really and this is, this is one of the bits where I said this is not production code because ah, in this so version. That keeps coming up in the chat, by the way. People are like, really clarify what, what we mean by it's not production code. So, I basically exposed the entire Node modules folder. Yeah, why don't you? Why not? You don't do that in production. Please don't. But in this case, it's just the easiest way, and you don't have to actually think about my build steps in the background, how I'm actually bundling this or whatever. And also, um, I'm not doing any cache cleanup. So if you actually bump the version, you're probably going to run, run, run into problems because old files might still lie around. So there's definitely things that I'm just skipping over for sake of brevity and because this is already complicated. OK, enough. so yeah, this is what I was saying earlier about the kind of purging of caches. You yeah. want to make sure that. Cache invalidation is hard. It is, yeah, but it is definitely worth doing. Hi, Jay. Hello. Is it because we said service worker enough times? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> if you but, say but, service worker three times in the mirror, I do appear. It's been really difficult at some conferences because I've just been whisked to the other side of the planet. <laughs> um, I've just come to let you know that we, we've got a, a conference to do, and there are other people who would like to talk. Fine. <laughs> how close are we to the end? How, how close are we to the end? Um, actually, let me think. Where, where was I at? You're doing the dot. Oh, thing. the templating. Yeah, it's literally two lines. Here so, we go. So our DOT. How, for how long has it been literally two more lines? <laughs> <laughs> well, it would have been done faster if you didn't, you know. Uh, <laughs> so we're going to take a template function. Our template go. takes event.request. Go. We're going to reload. Oh, that looked, that looked, that looked that OK. Looked good. And now it should go back to normal. We're done. And now the, the, the test is to go offline. Really? Oh. We go offline. Oh. It still works. We can reload on all the subpages because we're offline. And the miss still doesn't work because we never went to the page. So that's fine. And I'm done. Hooray! Woo! <laughs> <laughs> that, code, that, that code will get a lot of uh, comments and, uh, and, and will be pushed to GitHub. And we will post the, the link in the uh, Chromium Dev. And slot. if you have questions, at Dasturma on Twitter, at Aerotrist. And you can mostly bug me because he didn't write it and he doesn't understand it. That's true. So. <laughs> They're laughing, but they know it's true. <laughs> <laughs> All right, right, thank you very much. Have a good one. Round of applause to Sermo.